and welcome back to my channel. This is ASMR Chemistry, and I'm a chemistry professor. Love teaching in the slow, methodical way, and I hope it is helpful for you to not only learn, but maybe just relax. Notice how I have an ink spot here, so I have lots of fountain pens here, and one of them has red ink, and I, I guess it was leaking. That's happened before, but anyway, I really want to get going, because I know that many of you have wanted a video on SN2 reactions, so that's right. We are focusing on carbon organic chemistry. that exist and many different types of reactions, but SN2 reactions are one of the most common ones, so it's very important to understand the fundamentals of uh, SN2 reactions. So let's get going. I wanted to say something about the name SN2. Really need to. Oh my gosh, it's leaking more. I think we're done with this red pen for the moment. Anyway, two here is referring to there being two molecules in the elementary step of the mechanism. Okay, so that's what that's about. Nucleophilic and substitution, yes? Alright. So, let us look at this. It looks like I'm, um, well, I'm not going to get too gory. SN2 reactions. Let's get our black pen. What we're looking at here, again, we're going to be talking about the fundamentals. So this is where we have an atom. So in each of these SN2 reactions, we are always going to have a nucleophile. All right. We will always have an electrophile. And we will always have a leaving group. Let's look at the aspects of each of these that always appear in our SN2 reactions. Okay, the nucleophile. This is something with excess. definition excess electron density. It may have a 
negative charge. Doesn't have to, though. Okay. So these are the aspects we're going to be thinking about. Okay, whereas an electrophile, this is now electron deficient. So, it's going to be, have less electron density than the nucleophile, and so you might see something where it is either positive charge, possible, or you could also have a And that's the same over here. This could be partially negative, right? Okay. And then we will have a leaving group. So the leaving group is what you will see. We're not as concerned with the aspects of it because oftentimes you will need to identify what is the nucleophile, what is the electrophile. The leaving group is defined by virtue of the chemical reaction that you're interested in, and it will be the product. Okay, one of those products. So let's look at an example. And in this example, we will first look at the overall reaction And then we're going to break down the overall reaction. So this overall reaction that we have, this stuff. I'm moving this paper up and I don't want it to push anything. So let's write this out in a way that is showing our reactants and products without showing any structures, instead just showing the formulas. Okay. So we've As I said, you can identify it by it being one of the products. So, this methyl chloride, this is where all the action is, right? Here's our nucleophile. We are going to investigate what the electrophile is. So, preview it as the carbon, and we'll talk about why. And then we have our final substituted product and our leaving group. Okay, so now let's look at the mechanism of this. And I'm going to start out by drawing out the structure of our carbon-based molecule here. Okay, our methyl chloride. Drawing the chloro 
marker up over here because this is what's going to leave. You don't have to draw it this way. Okay, this can be moved around. And sometimes it's easier to show it this way. Alright, we've got three hydrogens. This carbon is sp3 hybridized, right? So we have a tetrahedral structure around it. 9.5 degree angles between all of these. Okay, so there's our tetrahedral. Now, notice how we've got this electronegative chloral group here bonded to carbon that is less electronegative. So we would expect here grab not the red pen, <laughs> that the chloral group will draw electron density towards it. So here we would have partial negative. And that means that the carbon here has a partial positive. This nucleophile here. Okay, so let's take a look at this hydroxy group and consider its behavior as it reacts. I'm drawing the hydrogen on this side because it there are these lone pairs and the overall negative charge, right? This hydroxy group. This will behave as the nucleophile. It's got a negative charge, it's got lone pairs, it has everything needed to act as this nucleophile that has the excess electron density. This carbon, meanwhile, has what we would consider a deficiency of electrons, since within this bond, much of the electron density is pulled over towards the chloral group. Okay, so here we have the electrophile. And now we can show in this mechanism how the nucleophile, its electrons here are coming towards the nucleophile. Okay. So, this is sometimes called electron pushing when we show these arrows. This is used all the time in organic chemistry mechanisms. We want to make sure that we draw these arrows in the correct direction. And the nucleophile and this pair of electrons that is then going to form a bond with the electrophile of this carbon. Okay, so here we have shown what's happening. So next, because we are interested in this mechanism, we are going to draw the transition state. So this is now the creation of this bond between nucleophile and electrophile. So transition states, the way we draw those is within show a partial bond is with dashed lines as we call the conventions here. So this is not a full bond here. How many dashes you put is arbitrary. You could put three, four, depending on how much space you have and all of that. It's a pretty long partial bond I have there, but that's all right. Okay, meanwhile, as this bond is forming, this bond between carbon and chlorine is breaking. So this bond is now getting longer and weaker. 
as this bond is getting shorter and stronger. But these are happening at the same time. Okay, we have this hydroxy group moving in while the chloral group is moving out. All right, now what's happening to these hydrogens? Well, they are now changing their configuration and we are going to talk about the hybridization in a second. This is my drawing. Okay. There's a word. Transition state. Alright, so a convention, the label for transition state is a double dagger. So over here, we talked about this carbon being sp3, right? 109.5 degree bond angles for that hybridization. What's happening here? Okay, we now have a trigonal planar geometry of these three hydrogens around the central carbon. hybridization is this. This is sp2. So there is this brief moment where this carbon is going from sp3 to sp2. These partial bonds are being formed with those p orbitals on the carbon. All right. And then ultimately, as this chloro group leaves, we end up with, let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw this. I don't have an overlay to put an arrow here and have it over there and show everything. So I'm going to have this arrow go down, right, and then show our final product, which is the carbon. Bonded now to the deroxy group that just formed of that full bond. And these hydrogens are now pointing in the other direction. This carbon is now sp3 hybridized again in our final product. And that chloro group is now all alone by itself. Okay. Notice how the flip has happened where this carbon was originally bonded to the chloro here. And the chloro was substituted by the hydroxy group here. And now it's on this side. This carbon is not chiral. It's achiral. But if it were chiral center, we would see a flip in the stereochemistry. It would go from R to S or S to R. Okay, in this example, we're not looking as closely at stereochemistry. We're just considering... What is the mechanism and what is happening? What are these fundamental ideas? I also wanted to make sure that I included, because we were talking about arrow pushing earlier, right? This bond here, here's an electron pair that creates the bond between carbon and chlorine. These electrons are then going to be associated with this chloride once it is free, right? So when we show this electron pair coming to form that bond, we also need to show this bond breaking and then those electrons becoming associated with the chloride product at the end, that leaving group. Okay, 
So, that's something you want to be aware of to show all those arrows that signify how the bonds are being made and broken to give you the final products that we have here. All right, I hope this was helpful for you as either teaching you a little bit about SM2 reactions, nucleophilic substitution reactions, or as a review, which can be helpful for homework or exams or anything else that you have. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe if this is helpful for you. And let me know in the comments if you have requests for other topics. I'd be very happy to create a video for you. Thank you, and I will see you next time.